touch anybody else. Because we got Bowser and Toon Link. And I think this team comp is actually really strong in doubles because of what Toon Link sets up for Bowser's KOs. But because it's Roy and Fox, that Bowser's going to have a miserable time. So the, the Toon Link can't play the passive game. He's going to be forced to actually box up close. Actually, the name T-Sizzle... It sounds so much more familiar now. Actually, now, now seeing this Toon Link, it makes yeah. sense. I'm pretty sure I've seen him before. Yeah, T Sizzle, the Toon Link hits hits a little bit uh, hits a little bit of memory more than just T Sizzle. But either way, walling off. I love that positioning from Goblin, where they prevented uh, they prevented Enter the Gungeon Fan from getting out of the corner while being harassed by Fox, and while also T Sizzle couldn't reliably approach. And look at this 141 already on the Bowser. That's where they're home, and Enter the Gungeon Fan is I'm going to be I'm calling them ETG, man. That's too long. Yeah. <laughs> so, ET, ETG, <laughs> it's, it, it's a look, lot. It's change your tag to ETG. There you go. But, like, look at the way that Goblin is body blocking him over there. Just putting out a bunch of hitboxes that were safe at center stage. We mentioned this at the very beginning, which allowed Fox to continue to do what he wants. Light gets to get a ledge trap, and because of that, not only did they get to KO on a very aggressive, like, defense collection, very, uh, like, unadvised defensive option from the air dodge in before, but that also allowed Fox to close that out. And now look at this lead that they're holding on to pretty solidly. That damage is getting racked up on the left. Go help him, please. T-Sizzle got carried from the right side of the stage to the left with a full Fox combo. And then ETG just had to hold that. <laughs> Bro, it... I, I knew it was going to happen eventually. Goblin hit light a few times at last stock. And, and luckily for the red team, the, the green team is also just kind of taking each other out. <laughs> so we're down to two stocks to, to three now because I'll smash came through. t has got to be careful. If you can get a bomb to fair soon off stage, maybe. But now with the rage gone, you're going to lose that ability to get that gimp. It looked like the uh, flying slam uh, actually intercepted after Fox's rising forward air and took Toon Link off the top. That's a rough way to lose their stock, especially as definitely the one of the few lightest characters on the stage. And, and that, that, what just happened a second ago seems like it was nothing, but it was so important. Goblin got the Bowser deep off stage, right? right? And then played around roll distance to still help 2v1 if Light set up a juggle. But as soon as Bowser came back, then he went back to the ledge track. Don't focus on one kill, go for the other. I don't know what that was all about, but the red team will take that. Firefoxing directly into Bowser's back air. Not good for your lifespan, I'm gonna tell you that. <laughs> And Goblin once again hunting for an air dodge, but this time T Sizzle not giving it. But there's that up smash out of shield, expecting the approach on the corner, wanting to take Goblin out and push Goblin off stage while Light was trying to chill in center, waiting for the hit. Goblin took advantage of that with an out of shield punish that didn't seem like T Sizzle was ready for. Look Light, at this was, dash Light was just messing around over there. That what, he, he what, vibing. He what, vibing. what sucks for Toon Link in that spot too is that Toon Link already is pretty punishable on grab to begin with, but in these spots. You can't zero or do too much, so you can't grab. So, I mean, excuse me, you can't grab because it's a free whiff punish. Right. So you try to go for things that aren't that, but the problem is for Goblin, it's like, well, I'm going to just camp and shield because I know you want to forward throw me to get stage position, but you're afraid to because Light is right there. And he will run up on you the moment you give him the chance to. Fox may be the full stage away, but you still have to respect not only Fox's speed, but Light's reaction time. As the switch over to what some people have been calling better Fox in some cases. I do not agree, but you do have a command grab as the me brawler comes out from ETG. It took me a second to realize what that even was <laughs> because he's got the mask, but uh, me brawler is definitely a lot better now. I will give him that. I don't think he's better than Fox, I don't but this character that. is strong. He's got good KO power. He's got the command grab. The Nair is good, but the main thing is that Thrupper is kind of hard to line up consistently in doubles because if you don't have a teammate who can save you after your free fall from the up beat, you're going to have a bad time. Yeah, this entire kit feels like as that up smash comes out on the shot, but his entire kit looks like it's built for that singles, which feels great in singles, but very high rolling in doubles. You don't have the, the chance to set up those combos that me brawler players have been putting out time and time again. 
and you're very reliant on your teammate without that down B in order to oh. consistently recover. Though, the Thrupper still doesn't not take in the stock at a 152 Goblin. They look a lot better here so far, though. I will say that. T-Sizzle just missed a bomb fair a little while ago on the recovery from Light. And then all of these shot puts did an amazing job of letting them win ledge for a while. They finally got a KO. They have Goblin at 173. So any straight hit or a fourth throw even Came will the get them that. So this actually is significantly better so far, even with this percent deficit. Yeah, while you're losing a lot of the, uh, while you may be a little bit of a high roll uh, setup in order going for the, the Toon Link and the Meat Brawler, what you lose in some consistency, you gain in tempo. Mm -hmm. Both of these uh, characters are a whole lot faster and a whole lot floatier. Not too, that, that side B command grab does 20. It's kind of yeah, ridiculous. It, it does 20 damage and it goes, it has very light armor. So it goes through some hits and you saw it went through, I believe it was the boomerang to get in. So this has definitely been a much better switch. You see that the green team is kind of like, hung, like hunkered down a bit. It's like, okay, we got to respect them a bit here. Let's focus on pushing them off stage. But the reversal back here, the shot, but oh my Ooh. God. Ah. I'm downtown. <laughs> that, that one, I, I, I wanted to see that just make somebody's stock explode. The way that bounced back of the reflector. <laughs> Jeez, that would have been that would have been a four point shot if that didn't actually hit anything. But I like the deviation here. Rely on Toon Link's zoning capabilities, throwing items from up top. Toon Link is one of the few floatier characters. He's the only floaty character on the screen, so you can use that to lob items from deep. Yeah. Assuming that Goblin doesn't take this stock right now, which he does with the jab back and threatening that position so well. Yeah. Now you yeah, there was only so much you could do with that. You have one, and one only you could cash out. That down B is not as strong of a skip disadvantage option as GSS's slip kick, but it is a, a solid one at that. But once you commit to that kick, you don't get the grounded hitbox or anything like that. You just have the end hitbox. So if somebody's holding shield, they wait or position themselves just like Light did right there, you're going to get capitalized. And there's not much you can really do there either because you already got hit here. Then here comes Goblin. I think he might have sniped the jump at that position too. And then you saw how a Light covered the right side. If he went to the right with that up air, he was forced to get hit there. So he went to the left. Goblin was already on the platform. And then even if Goblin gets hit here after the coverage from the up air on the right, to cover jump away you get that sure that's a punish but i'm already in position ready to cover you and even if you get on that platform light can instantly react to that as well to get an up air yeah it's doubles oftentimes in many of these team-based games they can, can be a game of circles both literally and figuratively the uh, goblin taking point playing the aggressor up here and challenging. And as soon as we saw ETG commit to a button, that's when the backup positioning of Light took uh, found its advantage, rotating between the two at set intervals. So they always found a punish, especially given how fast both of those two not only are in their characters, but how they play. It was very snappy and forced. It seemed like it forced Green Team to play a little bit out of their comfort zone just long enough in order to them to find significant leads in both games. Exactly, and one of the best ways to be able to break these situations down and see the high quality replays that you're seeing right there is the best production team in the business. House of 3000 currently running things behind the scenes on these streams right now. Big shout out to Devin, of course, as always. Make sure you check them out on Twitter, Facebook, Twitch, and YouTube because they have an amazing weekly that happens every single week on Wednesdays. It is the Xeno, uh, Xeno Weeklies and, of course, Xeno Saga, I believe, is around the corner, so make sure you sign up for that, April too. 9th. Check them out April 9th, so we have confirmed date. But also, make sure you check out and support, of course, the people who are making this happen right now, the Collision Series group. Yeah, it is the premiere, a new 